Welcome to LEAP. I'm really excited, actually, about our topic today. <laughs> I just had a really happy conversation about quantum physics with Francis for the last half an hour. And uh, we were just talking about everything under the sun and not under the sun. And uh, so, yeah, I'm just trying to see how to introduce this topic. Um, I have to say, earlier in the week, I was just feeling something around wanting to talk about the victim identity and how to undo it, how to release it from the mind, because I was just seeing all these places, like I said a little while ago um, on the show today, where I, I still want to see myself as a victim of something, like whether it's of this body or of other bodies or some circumstance that I need to try and fix or whatever, like just endless array of victim situations. And I was in prayer around all of that and was like, well, how does that relate to quantum physics? Like it just feels like totally unrelated somehow. Um, and I feel like this show is, is part of that, like is really looking at that in a really deep way. Because my pathway is A Course in Miracles and it's wanting to wake up from this thought that I'm a person in the world and that I can, I don't know, that I'm, I'm subject to these circumstances or at, at the mercy of the world around me and these things that we take for granted, granted so heavily in, in our daily existence that they never, virtually never get questioned or looked at. So, yeah, so I have Francis Sue with me here <laughs> today. <laughs> Start with that. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I feel like, yeah, let's see here. I feel like we, the topic is really about time and undoing time and, and seeing how this all relates to quantum physics and, and the victim identity. And how to even get there, I really don't know. I'm not sure how to get there. Um, so it's, I'm more like, I feel like this is just, um, we're going we're gonna to start with this and just um, see here. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to put that out to you, Francis, I guess, was because yeah. you know, we've been bridging so many different topics this morning, and it feels like they're all kind of interconnected somehow. Yeah. But... It feels yeah. like uh, satisfying to for when we, when we come together, we just talk about science and quantum for a while because we don't normally talk like that here so much. We talk about the mind and the oneness, but then when we start to talk about science, it's something like, whoa, it's really fun because um, Susan approached me a few days ago and saying we want to talk about victim victim mentality because that seems to be uh, the day-to-day -day experience. Um, and we're more and more aware of how much uh, the problems that we have these days is, is around that thinking. And, um, and then when, when I started to think about victim mentality and then we started to talk, we just realized you can't really talk about or believe in victimhood unless you believe in causation. <laughs> And when we talk about causation, we can't help but touch upon the, the, the topic of time, because physics, apparently, the, the scientists and, and physicists, they have been talking about causation big time, in, even when they're trying to understand the, the basic fund, the fundamental building blocks of the universe. They can't help but talking about causation, like what causes what. And a lot of theories are actually based on this causation around time, like a sequence. What happened in the past causes what happens right now, and whatever happens right now will cause what happens in the future. It's like that's how time even is understood and causation. And but yeah, but it, that's why it, it's fun to talk about quantum physics because recently they started to to uh, question this, this very notion of, of linear time and linear causation. Mm -hmm. And one thing I can think about is, um, is one thing called um, 
quantum eraser or um, delayed delayed choice. De delayed choice. Yeah. Basically, they because we all just a little bit of refreshment. We all know the the very basic quantum physics um, well known experiment double slit experiment basically shows that um, photons or electrons, the, the, the tiny little things that the scientists are uh, observing, they, they can pass different um, slit. They can pass one, they can pass the other one, they can pass both, and they pass neither all at the same time until the observer is observing it. Then they choose one specific route. So one thing that's, that specific start to take shape only when you start to observe it. And before you observe it, it is all possibilities, all simultaneous and happening at the same time. So basically, then they started to, based on that, start to observe something that should happen, that should take millions of years to happen, such as a star that is millions of years away, light years away. And the light shouldn't even reach this planet until the light travel millions of years. And they, of course, according to that experiment, the light will take all kinds of routes. And then they realize when they observe it in present moment, however they observe it or however they measure it, de determines what route they take from billions of years ago. So then they started to freak out. OK, what does that mean? So the present de determines the past. So the future determines the past. So it's not the time doesn't go one way anymore. It's not just the past leads to the future anymore. Actually, whatever you do now determines the past. So that is the first mind-blowing thing that, that, that starts to bend their mind. So yeah, yeah, that's great. Let's <laughs> say it's, it's kind of like these levels of being mind blown with quantum because that's one of them. Is you kind of get show that you look at something now that um, never happened, but then it changes what happened in the so-called past. So it just makes no sense whatsoever to the intellect. So I love that. And then the other thing I was sharing with you before the show was that the other thing that they were seeing was that in cause and effect, it's more like you know, A causes B causes C, but that's just an interpretation of causation. It's more like an appearance that A causes B causes C. Um, the, the better way of looking at it is in a number sequence. So if you have a number sequence of two, three, four, five, two doesn't cause three, three doesn't cause four. We just interpret that they're related in some way. But it's the same thing when quantum physicists study things it's just an appearance of things causing each other in time, either forward or backward. Yeah. It's not actually causing. It's, it's like, um, it's like a, a way of, of interpreting what's happening that we feel comfortable with, I guess. Yeah. So. Yeah. Because I think, you know, we were just talking, like, there is such a gap between the two phys physic or physicist um, system, one quantum, which studies the most basic building block of the universe. And then the other one is the perceptual world, galaxies, things we can measure, things we observe. This seems to be governed by the law of gravity or relativity and different things. But these two have a fundamental difference. Like they don't have this so-called theory of everything that, that rules everything. So the scientists recently, they just have been so much wanting to find a theory for everything. And um, a few decades ago, someone called, I think called Wheeler, he found something that really bridged the gap. But then um, I was telling Susan that that theory wasn't really fully um, welcomed by the world or the, by the scientists because in order for that theory to stand, they have to accept the conclusion that time doesn't exist. Nothing ever happens ever in this universe. And they cannot accept that, that reality. So they think that that theory just, just doesn't work. But time, it becomes like a, such um, an area 
in the in the quantum research recently that a very very new research recently showed that they started to think that time is something that is very relevant and is not a true fact and only exists if you observe so basically they're saying in the in the universe outside if you have a god like presence that the observer is outside of the universe you actually wouldn't observe time at all because nothing ever changes and only when you start to observe from within the universe then you start to measure changes and time start to make sense so that's originally a theory but recently they actually started to test it out cuz it's a very difficult to test theory cuz nobody can really stay out of the universe and observe from outside but they started to 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 do some kind of so-called toy universe then they they monitor from outside of the system and they use two photons that are entangled with each other and they observe this photon but they they actually reached the conclusion really from outside of the system they can never um observe any kind of difference or change from anything within the system unless the observer become entangled with the system and i like that that word a lot it's like okay if we the observer if our mind truly stay above all the specifics all the thoughts and all the seeming separate particles then we cannot detect any changes or any problem and the scientists prove that the only way you can detect change or time is the observer become entangled so i thought wow i like that word entangled basically meaning the observer become attached and and you become one with the 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 so called particle that in in and of itself is the whole then is changeless but when you separate them out and you just observe one and you become entangled with this one then you suddenly see this one moves and makes sense and and have problems to be solved and there's time that's going on that's the only way they can manage explain time right now like make sense so i thought well that's that's very applicable to us <laughs> cuz because i feel like in, in even in our daily experience that is my experience you know for us to to try to solve anything in this system mm. we have to define the problem first we have to become personally attached to the way we define it then we're trying to find a solution and it's just not working right and something you said to me the other day caught my attention was that we can't really be happy in time like if we think we're in time or something we perceive it like we can't be be truly happy that this happiness thing can only seem to be outside of time yeah it seems to be like this it's almost like a state exactly of awareness that is independent yeah of whatever whatever it is that might be perceived that yeah so it's like time is a state of mind and happiness is a state of mind and these two states of minds are completely different so the happiness state of mind is not aware of time and doesn't get entangled <laughs> with the time system mm -hmm. and the one that that when our thinking is get entangled with the time space system then there is no happiness anymore there is defining problems and trying to solve problems but only in the moment when our mind start to realign to say okay maybe i want to choose to pop out of this toy universe now to be the observer that's above that's truly where we get in back into the happiness state of mind so there's like just this two state of mind that we're constantly choosing you know mm -hmm. and when we were talking right before the show like the way i really like quantum um physics research these days is because it doesn't really matter how much they got bog down or or a going which direction it seems like the research always point to the fact that it's pretty meaningless to study mm. or uh, uh or try to research anything at this level like the perceptual level the 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 photon level 
it's it's quite meaningless. Mm. It's always determined by the now. You know, the observer now determines billions of years ago, determines yesterday, determines whatever, and it's not. It's always about the observer's expectation right now. Right. Yeah. And I was like I was sharing with you. I I spent all my life really like in these fields, well, all my life, <laughs> more or less in all my life in these fields, in science and all these different fields, and they were all based in something called empiricism, which is where we use our senses, our five senses. We think that's our, our source of knowledge, actually. That's, that's how I find out about what's real and what's true. And everything was based on that. And so I, all I have to do, step one, is assume that empiricism is correct and everything else will fall into place. And this actually takes it blows the entire thing out of the water. It says empiricism is totally false, mm. that what we perceive is not true at all, mm. that anything that we perceive is actually a lie. It's mm -hmm. actually, it's actually our, something is going on. There's mm -hmm. some sort of a trick. Mm -hmm. And that the only thing we need to do is, is you know, with help, Holy Spirit comes in, yeah. <laughs> is, to really, um, is to really start looking at what's inside in terms of what do I really believe? What, do I, what are these concepts inside the mind that seem to be out picturing yeah. or in, in a way putting it out there so it starts here and it, you know the chair, chair only appears because something in my mind seems to think have a concept of chair and concept of red and whatever you know so it's like it's completely flipped on its head but the intellect can't get to that at all you know so that's where we need a lot of help right. to begin to unravel yeah. and undo you know so much of these core assumptions. Yeah. That's why we need an observer from out of time and space to guide us. Like with from within the mind is just so sucked into the specifics and details is is in the wrong direction un unless we choose to detach. And I think that comes ba back to our practical application around guidance. And even though in in terms of guidance, I think what is truly the important part is the choice to choose to think with the spirit, which is out of time and space, and not so much about do you get it right or wrong, um, not so much about whether this move, turn left or turn right, is going to mess you up, so to speak. That is still not, not the true essence of what this is truly helping you know it is alignment of the option in the mind to think outside of of this realm um, and consistently choosing that consistently like now is the the moment that you choose now is the moment you choose and every every time that is ch chosen then the mind is is coming back to its natural state mm -hmm. so yeah, that's really cool because the Course in Miracles actually says time is isn't real at all. Like it's there, it's like has no reality at all. <laughs> right. It's not our experience. <laughs> right. Experience is that it is real, and so this business of of needing some kind of a guide to to speak to us from outside of time, to help us from within time. Yeah. To to basically come out of it in some way feels really like key to it all. Right. I mean. Yeah, even in the quantum world, they just started to think the time is such a mis misdirected way of thinking that we think time implies a sequence. Because um, we were talking about this ultimate victim, vic victim thinking, something happened that causes something else, like sickness. Okay, if there is a, a science or medical model, they, they would say if you smoke, you you will have cancer, let's say, just like one of the many, many examples. This is the cause, this is the effect. And it does imply a time, it does imply something happened as a result from something else. But recently, they, they're thinking actually the time is irreversible, meaning that these are sequence of events, like you said, it's a pattern. Even if you know that is true, that is seems like a pattern. But time can go this way or that way. So it could be cancer happen first, and then smoking happen second. That still stands in a scientific model. So it doesn't doesn't involve any kind of a causality. But really, I was thinking 
they're still thinking in terms of time. That's why they're like, okay, is the future determine the past or the past det determine the future? But really, what, it, what if everything is simultaneously? It's just happening and then the mind is determining or interpreting everything as if it's causing, it's sequential, it's past, present, and the future. So that is just completely wrong way of thinking. Yeah, yeah, well, I was, I was just thinking about this kind of victim um, experience I had this morning, I'm just gonna use an example, and just how, how this can all be relevant to, you know, this experience of being a person. Because, like, I can see how, how, you know, again, I was in this kind of flow and things are feeling pretty good and I reached out to a friend to say, can we, can we connect? And, and she wasn't available. And that immediately these thoughts came into my mind to say, oh, woe is me. Like, uh, you know, I'm hard done by, I'm alone, I'm, you know, she should want to reach out to me, uh, you know, just all of these thoughts. And it was like this entanglement into really my interpretations is what it was of what I, I thought was happening. But very, very quickly, how much there was like this um, shift out of whatever that pretty easy state of mind I was in into something that felt complicated and there was some kind of a problem. Mm -hmm. And somehow I needed to like, I was like battling with something outside of myself. And that, yeah, like there's just this... Yeah, like what you were saying, ha there's happiness, which is one state of mind, and then there's like everything else, which is like the experience of being mm -hmm. a person, and you know, I have to contend with something, that mm -hmm. I have to deal with something, I have to handle mm -hmm. problems, you know, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and that the, and the world is coming at me, it's not coming, it's not coming from me, mm -hmm. sort of thing. So it's like this um, practice of having to keep you know, oh, there it is. I want to go. I want to run off into some other, some storyline, mm -hmm. and I need to bring this back to my mind and just remember what this is for. Mm -hmm. This is actually, this is actually to question. There's actually thoughts here that need to be questioned. They need to be. It's like it's in. It's inside. It's not out there. Mm -hmm. You know. And so, and this is we, in community. We talk about mind training. Mm -hmm. You know, and that we have a ton of opportunities in the day to like watch our thoughts and oh, okay there's there's the thought that's run off again so I'm going to bring that back and mm -hmm. really start to question and be willing to, mm -hmm. to be wrong about it actually because mm -hmm. that's often where we can get hooked but I feel like that's the practical part of it is like is like okay so how does this relate to quantum physics well it does because we're we're seeing that maybe things aren't actually out there mm -hmm. people aren't actually out there but we have to be convinced of that we can't just accept it at face value, so we have to practice this business of reeling it back and, mm -hmm. you know, questioning and uncovering and exposing and all of this, mm -hmm. all these steps that are helpful mm -hmm. to kind of clean the mind of, mm -hmm. of what it thinks it is. Mm -hmm. so. I think I like, you know, the course ultimately is um, a solution, not a problem analyzing book. And we can leave all the problem defining and um, questions to the, to the scientists and to the quantum physicists that they're trying to define the problem and trying to, to find out what's going on. But the course is basically saying, you don't even need to know how the problem arises. You don't really need to know what mistake you have made to think this world, to think this linear time. You don't know, need to even feel bad or go back to think about it. But I have a present solution, and that is you can claim right now that going to change everything. And the scientists back it up any time that you observe or choose anything now, it changes everything. So, so that is very assuring, you know, all of this scientific research, we can talk about it for fun, but really it just backs up this, this this overwhelming, assuring feeling that, okay, let's choose, let's choose differently now. Mm -hmm. You know, let's choose something different at this moment. And the solution the, the, the spirit is given from the course is that I will be your choice now. Mm -hmm. 
just ask me for anything. And you don't even need to come up with it yourself from your analytical thinking mind. Just, I will be your choice. <laughs> It's really cool because you and I are also talking about how there's a simplicity here. Like it's like, oh, that maybe that choice is actually a lot simpler than we're led to believe and that happiness is a lot simpler. <laughs> happiness is simpler. Like it's like, it's like I, I get that reminded of, of me a lot. It's like maybe, maybe you don't have to think about all that. You know, it's like, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> like it's kind of like it's this me mesmerism I can get into and then I have to get kind of like my mighty companions are always there to like yeah. come on back. But it's kind of like that. It's, it's oh, oh, happiness, maybe tomorrow. I'll just kind of like do a few things and then I'll get happy later. Like, it, no, like maybe there is this simplicity that's actually available, but we've been duped into thinking it's not. Yeah. So there's like an assumption that it's complicated and heavy and takes a lot of work, but maybe that's just an assumption. Yeah. And so. Yeah, yeah. that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so we question all assumptions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nothing means anything. Like, Without our mind and our choice right now, nothing in this universe, even the scientist says, it doesn't seem like anything means anything. There's no point even to, to try to do anything unless the observer is brought in. And we are, the mind is observer, the mind can set what we choose. So, so this is the ultimate conclusion. <laughs> So did we undo time? <laughs> <laughs> the thinking of time. Well, it's cool too because I can see how you know you start undoing time. You're undoing the person. You're undoing cause and effect. It's like you're undoing everything at once. Like yeah. it's like it's all kind of wrapped up into one one ball. And mm -hmm. so it's like one thought or something. Yeah. And that when when it, when it goes, it all goes or something like. Yeah. There's like a there's a simplicity that to yeah. that you know so maybe that just kind of brings in that notion of simplicity again that okay I'll just let it go and yeah <laughs> and, and feel happy <laughs> yeah be happy <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, I know I'm feeling pretty <laughs> complete. I know we covered all these, all these different areas, but it, it's all somehow, yeah. I think we we've actually, yeah, it's like sort of intuitively feeling that there is like a place for quantum physics in the awakening. That yeah. Talking about it can yeah. be helpful. Like yeah. There's a real kind of, you know, yeah. that can facilitate actually something here that can be practical. Yeah. And so that's been my prayer is really to to really have that experience, so. I mean, this quantum physics used to be the only topic I can talk, again, my mom listened to, to me, because if I talk about God or anything, she's like, yeah, yeah. So I, I like this topic, I used to really like this topic. But yeah, this is really fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> okay. okay, thank, thank you, you everyone. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Susan, Thanks for having everyone. me. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Uh -huh.